We are a family know, like food. a giant Ow. tree. Cause flowers grow on trees. <laughs> There is so much to see, do, and eat at the 2024 Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival. Join us for the very first day of this year's fest. It's, it's Epcot, Epcot Flower and Garden. Garden. We're on so many algae pills. Oh, Let's I hope go. It works out for us. <laughs> International Flower and Garden Festival runs from February 28th to May 27th, 2024, and it is characterized by brilliant gardens, fresh flavors, lively entertainment, and more. We're gonna be checking all of it out today. Our team is here to review every single booth. We're gonna check out the merchandise, the entertainment, all of it, so that you know everything to expect at Flower and Garden, or so that you can live vicariously through us if you can't make it. My number one must-do tip at a festival is to buy the festival gift card. These gift cards are usually on a little wristlet that you can just wear on your wrist during the festival, and you can load however much money on there that you want. So whatever your budget is for the day, whether it's 50 or 100 or 200, you can toss it on that gift card, wear it on your wrist. That way you don't have to pull your wallet out at every booth, and you can keep track of your spending, because once that gift card's done, you can be done or not, if you would rather keep spending, reload it, you know, do you do you. We are kicking things off at the Odyssey building, which is the building you'll find kind of in the water between World Showcase and the other worlds of Epcot. And we are headed to the food booth here called the Citrus Blossom. This booth is all about orange, lemon, citrusy flavors, and it typically has some favorites for the fest, including a pretty popular sipper. All right, we've got our Citrus Blossom spread. Here we have the orange sesame tempura shrimp with orange chili sauce, the lemon meringue pie with lemon curd, lemon mousse, and toasted meringue. In this little orange bird sipper cup, there's the orange lemon smoothie in the souvenir sipper cup. You can also get it outside of the cup, but why would you not want this orange bird cup? Uh, this is a key lime wine slush, and here we have a beer flight. And the three beers are the Southern Tier Brewing Company Orange Twist Imperial Ale, the Left Hand Brewing Lemon Drop Shandy, and the Stone Brewing Tangerine Express Hazy IPA. one note but that's on purpose it's supposed to be all citrus all the time and that's what they bring you um, pretty much everything here is a winner um, but the standouts in my opinion are gonna be the smoothie that comes in the orange bird zipper because one this is the cutest thing in the entire world and I love him and two the smoothie is really really good it's like drinking an orange creamsicle it's very very tasty and the shrimp itself super perfectly cooked um, I really like this mix of beers. It's actually, there's like a good variety here. The first one reminded me of a slightly more orangey um, blue moon. The middle one was like a Lena Kugel's summer and shandy to a tea. It was so lemony. And then the final one was kind of like a classic IPA, but with just like a hint of um, citrus to it, which was really tasty. I really loved the wine slush when I first sipped it. I thought it was really exciting, but as I drink more of it, it's really, really sweet and really acidic. So it's a lot to handle, but if you really love key lime, I think it's a win. And then I think my loser here is actually gonna be the lemon meringue tart. Though the filling itself is really flavorful and it's beautiful, I can't get my knife to cut through the bottom of the pastry, and it was really difficult to cut through the side too. Um, and the pastry is just fine flavors, and it's only a loser here because the bar is pretty high. Otherwise, I mean, kind of a winter booth. Made my way over to Japan. We're gonna get started. For my first booth this morning, I am here at Hanami, and this is going to be one of my personal favorites and actually is kind of a staple of this festival because this is where we're gonna try out the famous frushi. Okay, here it is, the full Hanami spread. First, we're starting with the delicious frushi. It's strawberry, pineapple, and lychee wrapped in coconut rice and a pink soy wrap served with whipped cream, drizzled raspberry sauce, and toasted coconut. Then up here is the first of our drinks. It's the watermelon strawberry lemonade, non-alcoholic. Here in the middle is the ramen cup. It's ramen salad in a shaken cup with fresh vegetables, grilled chicken, and a dashi broth. Over here to the left is the Ichigo Breeze cocktail, sake with strawberry and watermelon. Then down here is the steam bun. It's filled with vegetables and plant-based soy meat. Let's dig in. Okay, 
let's talk about Hanami as a whole. I love this booth. You can almost always find me at the Japan booth in almost any festival. Really, really a big fan, and this booth is no different. This festival is no different. My favorite thing here, the standout for me, is going to be the ramen salad. It's cold, it's light, it's refreshing, super aromatic. There's a, it's a little bit uh, sparse on the chicken, but I think on a hot day, this would absolutely hit. This is so wonderful. The Fushi, as always, is an Epcot staple. Not my personal favorite, but it is nice, it's sweet. Um, I think it's a great dessert option, and it's not super messy. Bao bun was really interesting. It is plant-based soy. I liked it a lot, but probably not a standout in my opinion. The two drinks, uh, one was non-alcoholic and one was alcoholic. The non-alcoholic was a watermelon strawberry lemonade, and it was incredible. It was so nice, light, refreshing, super, super sweet, but bright and really, I, I would get this a hundred times. Very refreshing. The cocktail is the exact same thing with some sake in it. Really great if you want an adult beverage that is not full of the taste of alcohol and still uh, sweet and refreshing, this is a good one. But if you're not interested in the alcoholic side of it, just grab the lemonade. The lemonade was just as good and it's pretty much the same. All right, we are back at Refreshment Port. I always say Refreshment Port is like Canada adjacent. It's not exactly Canada and it's not exactly no man's land, but it is in World Showcase, but it's adjacent Canada because it's got poutine. Let's check it out. So this is what I got from Refreshment Port. So this is the plant-based buffalo chicken tender poutine on crispy potato barrels with ranch and plant-based blue cheese crumbles. Now it is plant-based, so the ranch is in quotation marks, and the cheese in blue cheese crumbles is also in quotation marks because they are both plant-based. I also got the Country Boy Brewing Orange Cream Hard Cider, and this is new. By the way, this is also new, but these are the two new items at this, uh, this booth. And this is the one returning item we got. This is the frozen mojito with Boyd and Blair rum. Sage, what's your hat doing like that? You never wear it like that. Well, it's sunny and I forgot sunscreen. So now you get now you get frontward facing hat, which I don't love, but that's we're moving on. Here's what I'm gonna say about Refreshment Port is that overall, I'm always excited to see what's on the menu because I love poutine and then I'm typically let down. Last uh, last festival, um, uh, Festival of the Arts, I, it was just a bunch of things that I just didn't love and I was um, underwhelmed by it all. But this, uh, the three items that I got, I actually, really enjoyed specifically i want to say that one of my favorite things i'm probably going to have for me tasting uh, the, a bunch of things this uh this festival is i loved the buffalo uh, the plant-based buffalo chicken poutine the first thing that's interesting to me is that it said ranch and blue cheese crumbles. And the thing that I appreciate about that is that typically blue cheese dressing is such a potent flavor. Blue cheese is a potent cheese and ranch is typically a little lighter. So I think it was a super smart choice to not overpower the buffalo with blue cheese. They did ranch with just a just a, 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 a blue cheese crumble, just, just a tad of potent right at the very end, which is really great. Um, the plant-based chicken had a nice crispy uh, um, casing, which is important to me for texture. Uh, the potato barrels were crispy as well. I would definitely get this again. Um, so this is this was really, really well done. I did try two beverages. Uh, one was the Country Boy Cider. I would say this is an introduction to people who wanted to start drinking cider or start drinking beer because it was definitely on the sweeter side. It was like an orange cream soda with a tickle. I know that sounds weird because it's yeah. still it's still a cider. It's still to give you a little zing uh, at, at, on the back end, but it is definitely on the sweeter side. So definitely anybody who wants to start trying, you know, venturing out to cider or beer, this might be a great uh, introductory lesson for you. And finally, the frozen mojito. I'm not a huge fan of uh, mojitos because I don't love mint, and this is very mint forward uh, as well as I was surprisingly strong. I definitely, the rum that they're using, it definitely has a strong rum flavor uh, or they were using a lot of rum. Typically pre-mixed drinks at Disney uh, are gonna be definitely on the more sober side and uh, this definitely got a kick from it. So overall, I was this year for Flower and Garden, I am impressed with what I got from Refreshment Port. Oh my gosh, so I'm wearing a, uh, a flower from Bambi shirt uh, because Flower and Garden and the sweetest person, Kaylee, said, I love your shirt. Can I give you this pin? I was like, that is the kindest. I, she, I was looking for someone who was really embodying the spirit of Flower and Garden and they, they love the shirt. Kaylee, thank you. All right, my first booth of the day. We are here in Mexico at the Jardín de Fiestas. Um, fun fact, I ran into my old DCP friend, Olivia. She's recording for me. Olivia, say hi. Hi. <laughs> that was 
Anyways, okay, she's <laughs> nervous. But I bought the whole entire menu. Everything is new here. We've got the sope de chil chilorio. We've got the tamale de rajas. And we've also got the floran. We've got two margaritas as well. We've got a lychee margarita and then a floral margarita. I think this is a great booth. It's all very light and refreshing and it's nothing heavy that's gonna weigh you down on a theme park day because it's gonna be hot, you know, it's Epcot. Um, so overall, I think this booth is great. The one item I do want to highlight specifically is the Sope de Chilorio. Um, I think this was great. This was my favorite item at the booth. Um, it's very bean forward, so if you don't like beans, just know that. But it wasn't spicy. The cabbage was a nice crunch. Um, the pork uh, was very nice, had great flavoring. But I will say the tamale was great. If you're kind of curious about tamales, you've never had one, that would be a great um, introductory item. Overall, really great. The drinks were nice and light as well. This booth, also at Festival of the Arts, had one of my favorite items as well. Another fun thing that you can do around the festival is Spike's Pollination Exploration, which is a scavenger hunt throughout the park. You purchase this for $9.99 in the gift shop, and then you can follow the scavenger hunt looking for Spike all around Epcot. Whether or not you find him and put the right stickers in the right spots, you do get a prize. So just by buying it, you get the prize in the end. And this year, the prizes are super cute, and you get to pick which one you want. Flower and Garden is great because for a part of the festival, there is an Easter egg hunt as well called the Extravaganza Scavenger Hunt. Breed Love here in Epcot. It's the first day of the 2024 Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival, and we're doing what we always do. We are rope dropping merch. Let's go. <laughs> bird crossbody or belt bag, orange bird milk carton, 100% original, 100% cuteness. Uh-oh, this feels like a must have. An orange bird lantern, it's solar powered. This is an orange bird plush transformer. And when you turn him inside out, he becomes an orange, but not any orange, a spaceship earth orange. Orange bird ears. Orange bird hat, do I need this? Orange bird apron. Orange bird juicer, you can squeeze the orange on top here. It goes down into this orange bird mug. Mini butterfly mug, complete with a butterfly wing handle. Set yourself free, mini butterfly spirit jersey. Beautiful sun hat. Garden stakes little signs, that's cool. Flower bag, you actually put dirt in this and grow flowers in it. Butterfly motif on a shirt. Turvis tumbler, beautiful. Blanket that rolls up and with a little handle. Well, three hours later, <laughs> we've captured all the content, we've seen all the merch. And I have to say, I fell in love with Orange Bird all over again, which is a good thing because I'm wearing him on my shirt today. <laughs> Let's go eat some festival food! Bonjour, we've arrived in France. We're, we're headed to Fleur de Lis. Uh, this is the France booth at this festival, so lots of French inspired springtime -y eats. And we're gonna chat out. And we're gonna get some serious cheese as well, which is kind of a staple of the France booth. All right, here's everything from Fleur de Lis. Uh, we have the croissant au fromage de chevre herbe et ale roti, which is the croissant with goat cheese, herbs, and roasted garlic. We have here the Parmentier de Canard à l'orange, which is pulled duck confit with orange sauce and garlic rosemary mashed potatoes. We've got the Gâteau au Crémeau Citron, Lavande et Thyme, Compote de Fruits Rouge, which is warm cake filled with lemon, lavender, and thyme infused cream served with berry compote. And then we have the Bernier Caramelisé Forêt Crème Vanille Glacé au Caramel Fleur de Sel, which is the caramelized beignet filled with vanilla cream and glazed with caramel fleur de sel. 
The France Spitz is not, they, they really go crazy with the names. They do a full translation. Uh, for drinks, we have the sparkling raspberry cocktail, which is sparkling wine with raspberry flavor. I actually really love that it's not, um, it doesn't have dye in it because I have trouble with red dye, so I'm really excited about that. And then we have La Vie en Rose frozen slush, which is vodka, gray goose, l'orange, Saint Germain liqueur, white and red cranberry juices. So let's eat up. France booth might be the best booth of the fest. Holy moly, this was amazing. The goat cheese croissant is the flakiest, butteriest, most perfect croissant, and it's stuffed full of herby goat cheese. If you get the wrong bite, it is way too much goat cheese versus croissant. Like you want it to be kind of balanced, but you kind of just have to be smart about how you bite it. It is delicious, so delicious. Obviously, it's got the like funkiness that goat cheese has. Um, so if you're averse to like funkier cheeses, probably not gonna be your vibe, but it is a beautiful, beautiful croissant. The duck weirdly gonna be my winner of this booth and this is why that's so crazy i don't like duck i don't like duck i think it's too um like fatty buttery tasting and i'm really averse to like fatty meats this duck is so perfectly cooked and the sauce it's like a leveled up turkey gravy it's like turkey gravy but with more robust like fancier french flavors i would say buttery i'm getting like this herby like aromatic situation happening the potatoes are delicious the duck is delicious and all i saw this and i was like i hate duck and this is the ugliest dish i've ever seen in my life it's still the ugliest dish i've ever seen in my life but i think it's like my favorite thing i've eaten today the beignet is awesome it's so awesome it's not like a beignet like you'll expect if you're thinking mickey beignets or like beignets from new orleans but it is more like a sweet bread but what's really amazing about it is the caramelize on top it's like a creme brulee hard caramel top um that gives it like a crunch and a super sweet caramelly taste i'm probably gonna keep some and bring it to my friends so they can try it too because i could not finish this on my own i'm also really shocked by the cake this one is weird because it's not exactly the most like flashy i would say but it has really really complex flavors the berries in the little combo on the side are really great with the like kind of like soft acidity fruitiness of the cake and the filling in the cake the cake is well cooked it's moist um, although not overly so it's kind of like right in the middle and then the weird stuff is this like pink gelée stuff which i thought would melt but it's hot it didn't melt at all that's where the lavender flavor is packed and it's really really aggressive but it makes it great because there's only a little bit of it on the plate so you can put get it with a good bite of the berries and the cake the drinks are good the raspberry wine i didn't taste a ton of raspberry i double checked with her and she said like yes this has a raspberry in it i'm not a huge raspberry fan so that was a plus for me but it wasn't overly raspberry it wasn't that exciting it kind of just tasted like a glass of wine the real winner here is going to be the slush super refreshing super cool kind of has like a like if you go to a coffee shop and they have like fancy iced tea and you order like a fancy herbal iced tea, sort of like the way the flowers smell is how this tastes. Uh, I, I like this. It's not my favorite of the France slushies. I think I would just go with the classic Grand Marnier orange slush that you can get year round here, but it's still delicious. It's fun for the festival and obviously very fitting for the theme. France, you're showing me something. This is Lotus House here in China. All right, here we are. We finally have the full spread. So we went with the spicy mala chicken skewer with a creamy peanut sauce, the pan fried vegetable dumplings, and then the house made cheesy crab wontons. For drinks, we grabbed a few. Right here in the middle is the mango bubble tea. It is non-alcoholic. Then we grabbed the Dragon Dynasty back here in the back. It's a spirit light rum, dragon fruit syrup, pina colada mix, and soda water. And then to the right, we got the Lucky Peach. It's peach whiskey, oolong tea, honey, lemon juice, and soda water. really like this booth, although not as much as I normally do. So the spicy chicken skewer is nice and creamy and has that heavy kind of nutty peanut butter flavor. Not super spicy, definitely that Disney spicy category if you've ever heard us talk about that. Crab wontons are so delicious, they're so creamy. I would have liked to see more crab, but honestly I'll never complain. Dumplings, 
they were good, but absolutely not for this price. There's only two of them for $5.50 and they are tiny. It comes out to like $2.75 for the smallest dumplings you've ever seen. Not a fan. When it comes to the peach whiskey, I surprisingly really like it. I'm not much of a whiskey drinker, but this was light, it was refreshing, and mine was a little bit watered down, so maybe that's why I liked it more, but it was nice and sweet. The Dragon Dynasty is fine. Not necessarily one of my personal favorites. Nice and sweet, but it has a nice uh, carbonation to it, but not necessarily my favorite. My favorite of the three drinks is easily the mango bubble tea. So light and refreshing and sweet. The tapioca is actually not too chewy, which sometimes I don't enjoy, but overall really like it. Nothing at this booth is going to be a must have for me except for the crab rangoons. Other than that, I think it's really, really delicious, but maybe not a must try. And now, this, I've reached my gauntlet. This, this world showcase. <clears throat> This man, right here. All eight items, mildly lactose intolerant. This is all ice cream. And send some cheesecake things. Let's get it. This World Showcase is the location here in World Showcase that you're going to want to grab all of your soft serve delights. Now they do have some really unique flavors like peanut butter and grape jelly. You can even uh, get it swirled, uh, you know, for like a fun peanut butter and jelly sandwich ice cream, if you will. But I was here by myself, which means I had to make four different trips to get all eight items because they, it's melting in the hot sun. But here we go. Here goes nothing. Now new to this World Showcase this year, there's the peanut butter soft serve and the grape jelly soft serve. And I did have them individually. I am not a huge fan of peanut butter. Everybody knows that. Everybody hates it about me. Uh, even my own father-in-law. But it's fine. I just don't love peanut butter. It is what it is. From a viewer who came up to me and said, hey man, I know you don't love peanut butter. Here's a great tip. They do offer it, uh, the, the peanut butter and the uh, jelly soft serve swirled. And the jelly does, he's right, the jelly does cut through the peanut butter. And the peanut butter is, by itself, is so strong. The ice cream float with vanilla soft serve and Barks Red Cream Soda. This, I absolutely lost my mind. Uh, first off, uh, I love a float. It is one of my favorite ice cream uh, situations to go to, specifically because it's like two different treats. The cream soda already has that vanilla vibe, that vanilla, uh, those vanilla flavoring, but having the vanilla ice cream within that cream soda, the Barks cream soda, it was just an absolutely next level experience. It is so sweet. Yes, be aware, it is so sweet. I could not have two of these, however, I will return to get this. I don't say that often about sweets, I'm not a sweet person, but this was something I could absolutely return to and get time and time again. New this year was the vanilla soft serve with cantaloupe liqueur. Now, if you're familiar with a ice cream martini that you can get over in the France pavilion, it was similar to that, which in my opinion, well, it's a little lazy because it's liqueur poured into a plastic martini glass and there's a little bit of soft serve on top. They just, that's, that's all it is. It's basically taking a shot of cantaloupe liqueur and then eating ice cream, vanilla ice cream afterwards. But the final good thing that I absolutely want to talk about, which is definitely another must do if you're visiting Swirled Showcase, the liquid nitro honey mascarpone cheesecake with fresh honey, granulated honey, honey mead blueberry compote presented by National Honey Board. It is new this year. This was texturally one of the most intriguing things and uh, from a flavor profile perspective, absolutely to die for. There are a couple different layers texturally, which was, which was really interesting. There was a really unique crystallation on top, uh, I believe from the, obviously the, the nitro. Then underneath that, it was like kind of the soft, uh, the soft cheesecake. And then uh, like in the middle, like even the further you you dug deep into this, uh, it actually got kind of harder. So it uh, almost made it more of uh, more, more of like an actual ice cream texture. It was mascarpone cheesecake, but it was just so good. The honey added a really great sweetness to it. So overall, uh, the things that if you're visiting Swirl Showcase, you gotta get the float and you gotta get uh, the nitro mascarpone cheesecake, the honey. It's it's absolutely so good. Welcome to Brunch Cot. Do you love Epcot? Do you love brunch? Well, then you'll love brunch cuts. <laughs> uh, they're offering this year a menu of uh, avocado toast with marinated tomatoes and plant-based cheese crumbles on toasted ciabatta, biscuits and gravy with impossible chicken fried steak and impossible sausage gravy, fried cinnamon roll bites sound delicious with cream cheese frosting and candied bacon, and then for beverages we've got a Fruit Loops shake, which is non-alcoholic, a peach bellini, 
and a coffee cocktail containing Joffrey's coffee with milk, vanilla vodka, Kahlua rum, and coffee liqueur. Oh my gosh, I see a friend. <laughs> Is it really you? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my friend Lee. In the early days of sort of internet media, a, a pioneer in reporting on theme parks, the thing that I love. Do you want to eat some food at Brunch Cut? I am so ready Let's to get in line. Well, they tell you about the roasted tomatoes, they tell you about the avocado, and of course the toast, and the crumbles of plant-based cheese. But what they didn't tell you about was the watermelon radish slice that you get on top that looks so beautiful and the edible flower. As a plant-based eater, a lot of times people will try to enhance things, make things creamy in texture by using various coconut products. Some foods I don't want to have coconut flavor in and avocado toast, I have to say, is, is one of them. Everything about it is kind of perfect and to have this coconut flavor kind of coming forward in this particular version of avocado toast, it's so sad because it has so many cool ingredients, I wanna love it. And unfortunately, I, I don't love it. So I wanna get your take. I like this. I don't think those tomatoes are roasted. I described it wrong, it's marinated tomatoes, so it's totally right. They're delicious marinade. Well, that makes total sense. Now that they're sense. marinated tomatoes. Okay, breed love. Do now you we feel got like it. they're great? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, the moment has come for the coffee cocktail. Lee is going to weigh in and really tell us what this Joffrey's coffee with milk, vanilla vodka, Kahlua rum, and coffee liqueur beverage is really like. Okay, it's um. That's a lot of liquors in it. <laughs> Vanilla vodka, Kahlua, and coffee liqueur. And you're really tasting them. I am not necessarily tasting the vanilla. Definitely okay. the Kahlua, the coffee liqueur, the cold brew that's in it from Joffrey. Are you getting that hit? Like it's a strong, is it strong basically? It doesn't taste super strong. Okay. I will say that. So it may be one of those drinks that catch creeps up on you. Because it okay. uh, doesn't, it, basically tastes like coffee. I don't taste a lot of alcohol in it. Okay. Time for the Fruit Loops Shake Lee. That tastes exactly like when you're a kid and you drink the milk after you have eaten Fruit Loops. And is that Spot a- Spot on. Is that something that you- I think if you enjoy that, you'd yeah. really like this and it's unique. Lee, I've made a perfect bite of the biscuit and gravy. Controversial, I agree, when you read about it. Yeah. That is really good. Oh. I'm sorry to tell you. That's okay. Because I know you wish the gravy was plant-based. I know. Well, there are a lot of uh, vegetarians yes. out there who I love, and um, I'm so happy that this is a dish they can they can enjoy, and, and maybe it's a gateway for people to experience impossible products. Right. Uh, the biscuit is a great texture. It's fluffy. It's got those layers in it you expect from a good biscuit. Oh my gosh. Now it's time for you to try the fried cinnamon roll bites. This is an, a major amount of food for uh, a, a reasonable price. Okay. Really good. Do I need to leave you alone for a yes, minute? Okay. I might need a moment. I'm going to sit back yourself. and just let you uh, enjoy. Fried dough. Who doesn't love it? Um, really coated. Each one of these is really coated in the cinnamon sugar. Plenty of that cream cheese frosting. Plenty of bacon. I think this is a great price for this. This one is really easy to share with mm -hmm. whoever, whatever friend you bring That's to the festival great, with you. Great. Oh, I'm getting it again you're, tomorrow. You're getting it again tomorrow. Pineapple Promenade is a booth that has a big focus on pineapple. You'll find things like Dole Whip and a spicy hot dog with pineapple chutney. This one maybe isn't anything to write home about. It's a great spot if you're a Dole Whip lover or if you want to try a kind of interesting or unique beer or wine. 
Florida Fresh, weirdly, was supposed to open in this booth by the Imagination Pavilion, but actually opened in the Odyssey right next to Citrus Blossom. This booth has a grilled warm water lobster tail, which, though it wasn't, like, one of the best things we had all day, it was pretty amazing. If you like lobster, it's pretty cool that you can get it at the festival. Northern Bloom is the booth in Canada, and this booth doesn't have a lot of variety year after year, but I would say that the options it does have stay pretty consistently good. Seared scallop, beef tenderloin tips, things that you might be able to make a meal out of compared to other festival booths. Everyone gets so excited for a festival funnel cake, and at this festival, it does have powdered sugar, vanilla ice cream, strawberry whipped cream, strawberry glaze, and strawberry crunch. So strawberry lovers, this one's for you. Bauernmarkt Farmer's Market is the Germany booth, and this one is known for potato pancakes with house-made applesauce. These are so, so tasty. They also have toasted pretzel bread with a black forest ham and melted cheese. So, you know, some, some pretty good stuff here. If you're a cheese lover, this booth is probably the one you want to swing by. Trowel and Trellis is a gardening-themed booth. This is a booth where you can find some pretty hearty offerings like the Impossible Farmhouse Meeple and the Soy Glaze Sticky Ribs. I heard a lot of people at the festival raving about the Chocolate Mousse Terrarium, and our team liked that one as well but it does have the more unique flavor of matcha. So if you're not a green tea person, uh, this one won't be it. And Flower and Garden has a really unique booth because they do have a booth that changes as the festival goes on with different menus for early bloom, springtime, and summer solstice. This spot does have one constant though with the grilled street corn on the cob, which is a full corn on the cob with plant-based cheese and a savory garlic spread. It's plant-based. That's crazy and awesome. I also just love that there's something to mix up the festival if you're coming multiple times. All right, and here's a look at our spread for Magnolia Terrace here in the American Pavilion. We've got a muffaletta panini over here. We've got the spicy chicken gumbo. We've got banana foster's bread pudding, a bayou cocktail, and a beer flight. Now, all of these items are returning except for the beer flight. There are two new beers in this flight. Okay, overall, I really enjoyed Magnolia Terrace. Um, it's obviously got a lot of Louisiana style um, influence. The Tiana topiary is here as well. So like, I think obviously that's where a lot of the influence comes from, but I really enjoyed everything at this booth and I would recommend any of it to anyone. Um, the muffaletta sandwich, I was a little worried that it was gonna be too olive forward for me because I don't love olives, but it's really balanced very nicely with the meat and the cheese and the little olive salad. So honestly, really good. Also, the gumbo is actually spicy. So good job, Disney. So I really like that. The gumbo is my favorite. I know it's been consistent the past few years, which is really awesome to hear. Um, so if anything, I would recommend the gumbo out of this whole booth. Bananas Foster, bread pudding was amazing. Um, I will be coming back to get that as well. The beer flight, um, I could take it or leave it. That's not really my thing. The ale, the fruit ale was my favorite because it's the lightest, it's the fruitiest. <laughs> so that's more my speed. Um, and I don't really love IPAs. But the cocktail was really delicious. If you enjoy a rum beverage, this is it. So there you go. But overall, this booth was great. I really enjoyed it. And I would come back to this booth. I also will say that a lot of these things at this booth are very heavy, um, a lot heavier than the first booth that we started with this morning. So keep that in mind. It's really hot today, so it was kind of, I wasn't super excited about eating these, but they are really tasty. Another mainstay of this festival are these amazing topiaries that are designed by Disney's horticulture team. They are spectacular. They are real plants. They are grown uh, year round in a greenhouse for this festival. There are tons around. Um, this one is kind of one we've all agreed is one of our favorites. It's Goofy Blowing Dandelions and it is so, so cute. All right, our next stop is the Honey Bistro. This is a honey focused festival booth. Lots of honey eats on the menu. I'm particularly excited for one thing that is available at this spot. Um, and what's also wonderful is that right next to it is the Honey Bistro Garden, where you can walk through and learn a little bit how honey is made. 
Uh, there are gardens all around Epcot in both the front of the park and back in World Showcase where you can learn about all sorts of different things. Some of my favorites are the Tea Garden and the Shakespeare Garden, both in the UK Pavilion. I also really love the little fairy houses they do over by Germany. Uh, just keep your eyes peeled. There are tons of super cute gardens and of course just looking at the flowers bloom is so much fun. This is part of the Honey Bistro Garden and it's so cute. It smells like honey over here. We have the chicken and waffles with crispy chicken and a honey sweet cornbread waffle with whipped honey butter and spicy honey. Oh boy. We also have what I'm very excited for, the new honey glazed cauliflower with honey roasted carrot puree, wild rice pilaf, spring vegetables, honey blistered grapes, and sunflower brittle, which is so colorful and it's a huge portion. It looks amazing. For drinks, I grabbed the honey peach cobbler freeze. Um, that has streusel on top. You can get this with or without vodka, and I would like you to ignore that mine is empty. Um, there's videos of it full. I will not be making any comments on the state of that drink at this time. And I went with the Copper Point Brewing Company Bees Squeeze Blonde Ale as well, which is a honey blonde, of course, that's why it's called Bees Squeeze. Chicken and waffles was awesome. I'm not a huge chicken and waffles person, um, but I really, really loved this. It was the perfect like honey sweetness. There was like a little chili spice to it. And then of course the savory chicken and the waffles were made from cornbread, had actual pieces of corn in them, which was so cool. Um, it reminded me of the Hush Puppies at Columbia Harbor House, if that makes sense, because those also have corn in them. Definitely a must get if you are a chicken and waffles person or a chicken or a waffles person. It's a musket. It's really, really good chicken and waffles. Some of the best I've had recently. My big winner here was the cauliflower. Super savory, amazing flavors in here. The sunflower brittle added the sweetness and this earthy seediness to the dish that just made it like so complex. And I really, really appreciated the different flavors in there. I loved how big the serving was. This felt like it could be a whole meal. Tons of broccoli, tons of cauliflower, purple broccoli, a beautiful plate. And it was like a full plate of food, which is really awesome. I really loved the like honey slush. Um, it's just that like, I don't think it was anything special, but I did drink it very, very fast. I think it would be great for kids. It has like a slight sweetness to it. It was kind of like vanilla, but just with a touch of honey. So I do recommend that one. And then the beer I had was kind of just like a German honey Kolsch, which I enjoyed, but I think I liked the beers at Citrus Blossom this morning better. If you don't know, Italy has pretty famously been the worst booth, I'll say it, the worst booth at any Epcot festival for pretty much for all of history and time. But the last few festivals, people have had some kind things to say. So I'm going to test it out and we will see if this is anything that maybe should be notable for your next trip. So here in the middle, this is the bocconcini. It's mozzarella, uh, grape tomatoes, and a pesto sauce, which looks wonderful. Back here in the back is the chocolate cannoli. It's a chocolate cannoli shell with peanut butter ricotta filling, which is very intriguing to me. <laughs> Up here in the front is the arribata. It's uh, panetta pasta, spicy tomato sauce, and a buttery shrimp. This one's new, uh, as well as the bocconcini here in the back. This here in the front is the Quattro de Formaggio. Uh, it's the same pasta and a four cheese sauce, also new. And then finally for our drink, we are trying out the Italian margarita with limoncello and tequila. This one's returning. That this booth is gonna get the award for most improved. That being said, there's been some chatter that it's been pretty good in the past few years, and I think that there are probably standout items, but I think overall this booth kind of remains as really fun, like pasta that you like, but nothing you need to go out of your way for. My number one favorite here was the um, arribata. I know I'm, I'm probably butchering that, I'm so sorry. It was the spicy marinara with buttery shrimp. I really liked the pasta. In the past, I found this pasta to be overcooked, mushy, just not my favorite. I liked it this time. I wish that they had chosen a different pasta for each of the dishes, um, so it didn't seem so mass produced, but I'm not upset because it's actually pretty good. The sauce is what's really kind of my, the thing that is standing out to me. It is a marinara sauce, so tomato acidic, 
really nice and kind of sweet even, but what's really good and what I think stands out is that I can tell that they've added chili flakes to it, so it actually is a little bit spicy. I also think that they gave you quite a bit of shrimp for the price and for what this was. The other pasta, I think it was fine. I think it was fine. And then the Italian margarita, there's a reason they keep bringing it back. I really like this drink actually. It's limoncello so it's nice and sweet but still has a really nice acidity and is almost a little bit tart but really refreshing, really bright. Overall I think the booth is actually very much improved but I do not think that this is anything to call home about or go crazy for. Tangerine Cafe is right in the heart of Morocco, right across from Spice Road Table. Lots of Moroccan spices, as well as uh, a brand new uh, cider flight, which is very exciting. I love when we get to try new ciders, uh, especially when uh, the entire flight is brand new. Not just one of the ciders, but all three ciders are brand new. And this is our takeaway from Tangerine Cafe. This is brand new. This is the Mediterranean flatbread with tremula, roasted vegetables, artichokes, olives, feta cheese. Oh, that looks delicious. And this is returning from last year, the orange blossom saffron cake. And these are some brand new ciders uh, for this year. This is the Neal's Farms Pear Honeysuckle Hard Cider. In the middle is the Woodchuck Imperial Sip and Citrus Hard Cider. Then there's the Three Daughters Brewing Pomegranate Hard Cider from St. Petersburg, Florida. off to the side and talk about what just happened to Tangerine Cafe. So because I have been stationed, posted at Tangerine Cafe for the last, I would say, what, four or five? Four or five festivals? Three, four or five festivals? I don't know. I've been at Tangerine, uh, I've been covering Tangerine Cafe quite a bit. And I will say that I was impressed at this festival, this uh, variety of food was the most I enjoyed Tangerine Cafe out of the past uh, couple festivals. But this year they actually had a really excellent flatbread. I wouldn't say it's best of the fest, but I actually really did enjoy it. The bread came directly from like an open flame oven, almost like a, you could taste the char and the powder almost as if it was like a, a really nice pizza, but it was uh, Moroccan bread. So it was obviously uh, different different bread and different spices. The thing that I loved about it is that it was just covered in this like luxurious garlic aioli. It was drizzled right on top. The, actually, the other thing I was actually really impressed with was the saffron cake. It had a couple different layers. The top layer had this really nice uh, kind of hard shell and then when you dug into it, it slowly broke apart. It uh, cut really nicely and had this uh, multi-layered uh, flavor element that I really, really liked. It was light, it was airy. Definitely something I would uh, go back to again and again. It wasn't overly sweet, which is super important. I could actually, <laughs> I did eat the whole thing because it was, it was that good and I didn't, um, the richness didn't overpower my senses, which is super important. I was in super underwhelmed with the cider. I was actually searching for notes of the pear, uh, of the uh, citrus. Uh, the, definitely one, the one that stuck out to me the most was the pomegranate. I don't think I would personally uh, recommend the ciders this year. Again, uh, not super flavorful. It felt, uh, it felt as if I was just drinking cider. But honestly, the flatbread and the uh, saffron cake are are worth the eat. I liked it a lot. Best of the fast? Probably not, but still pretty good. Welcome to La Isla Fresca, here between France and Morocco, where you will find the impossible Jamaican yeah. beef patty with spicy papaya syrup and the coconut tres leches cake, which is a definite favorite of mine from past years. On the beverage side of things, you can find a tropical slush made with lemonade, grapefruit, and simple syrup. That's non-alcoholic. The Wicked weed brewing mango wowsy hazy IPA with mango and the Florida Orange Groves Winery Tropical Perception White Sangria as well as a tropical breeze. All right, let's start with the uh, beef patties okay. or with the patties of the impossible patties. Jamaican beef patties are something in New York City you can find everywhere. Other than the fact that it's impossible vegan meat is that it has that spicy papaya syrup on top. Okay. So let's try it. You know, yay veganism. I'm obsessed with this. Okay, me too. I, I love it. That 
spicy papaya syrup. I, my dream. I it want is it. like the sweet, spicy. I want it at home. The vegan beef patty mm -hmm. inside is spiced. It's so beautifully seasoned. Mm -hmm. It's going to be too intense for some people. This is the opposite of bland. I would say it's a medium salsa heat. Not mild, mm -hmm. not hot. Tropical slush, Great. which is made with lemonade, grapefruit, and simple syrup. It's non-alcoholic, so I can drink it. And even though it's not marked as plant-based, it is, we checked. I do want to know, this, this yeah. does not have alcohol, but you right. can get this made with a oh. shot of rum. If oh. you would with like Don to do With Don Q Limon, limon rum. rum. So lemon flavored rum. Then nice. This is the tropical slush. That is called the tropical breeze, but it is the same drink. Just love it. Shot. I love it. It's like a non-alcoholic margarita to me. Yeah. Do you feel that? Yes. It's really refreshing, very grapefruit forward. So yes. if you don't, you aren't a fan of like grapefruit juice. Or if you or, take a medication where you can't drink grapefruit juice, cause true. I used to. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you would order this again non-alcoholic or would you get it with the limon, the Don Q limon rum? Depends on what time of day I find myself back here. I mean, so if it's France 10, fulfilled. if it's 11 a.m. when the booth opens, definitely with the rum. <laughs> All right, so this is just, you can see how ridiculously long this <laughs> name is. Wicked Weed Brewing Mango Wowsy Hazy IPA with Mango. This is good. If you like IPAs that are especially hoppy and bitter, this is a smoother than you're gonna be accustomed to and a little bit sweeter. Coconut Tres Leches. It just gets better. It is. I think it gets better every year. It's very good. I. Will say when when I got this from the booth, yeah, I was a little bit concerned because the top of it looked dry. And the thing about this cake is it's supposed to be wet, like all the way through. Yeah, this is super moist, especially moist down at the bottom. So if you're triggered by the word mm, that you just said, what? Well, how else would you describe it? Milky and dense. Oh, that's worse. <laughs> way worse. My next booth is here in the Africa section of the World Showcase. We are here at Refreshment Outpost where at least I'm getting three ice creams and two beers. So it's going to be a good booth. Let's go. We've got a seasonal fruit parfait with sweet chili sauce and Dole Whip mango. Amazing. Um, we've got tangerine soft serve, melted. We've also got an ice cream float, which is tangerine soft serve and red cream soda. The parfait is new. The tangerine items are returning. I also got two beers, but we put the beers aside for a second because ice cream is melting. So I don't even have a spoon. But here we go. Well, that's good. I am making such a huge mess. I've never been so stressed eating ice cream. This float is amazing. Please pardon this brief pause in your adventures oh. around World Showcase. This tangerine soft serve, I think is my new favorite flavor of soft serve. And specifically, I love it with the float, with the, what is it, red soda? Yeah, red cream soda. So honestly, I do think I like it better than the coconut. So this is my new favorite soft serve flavor. Now it's not Dole Whip, it's soft serve, so. Mm. The seasonal fruit parfait. I didn't grab a spoon, so I haven't gotten to the fruit part. There's a little bit of spice from the sweet chili. There's a little bit there, but it's nothing major, but again, I haven't gotten down to the sauce. And then I got two of the beers. All of them are new this year. So I got the Crooked Can Brewing Sopresa Picante Pale Ale. Also got the Woodchuck 802 Barrel Aged Hard Cider. I really like it. Mm. Mm. All three of these soft serve items are eligible for snack credits, so I would do that. Um, I do think, obviously, this is the biggest one, so it's the best bang for your buck in regards to snack credit. This also, I've never had 
one of the specialty Dole Whips over in Disneyland, but the one that Emma always raves about, this is very similar to that, I think. I'm starting to get down to it. I can feel the heat. Oh yeah, this is a winner. This is a winner. Okay, there's one more thing we have to go do um, while I finish the rest of this cider. We're gonna go check out Tiny Town because if you did not know, the little train town here in Germany, um, every time there's a festival going on, the Tiny Town is also celebrating the same festival. So let's go look. Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company have a number of specialty drinks at the festival, including the Ice Berry Chai Latte, the Citrus Frosted Iced Tea, the Tropical Frosted Iced Tea, and the Iced Honey Jasmine Latte. These can be found at different locations, so each location has one of the different drinks, so if you want to do a Joffrey's tour, you could. Must speak about the garden grapes. We must speak! We will not be silenced any longer. <laughs> and I know you've been thinking in this video, why are the girls being silenced? And you know what? <laughs> We're breaking it just this video they've been thinking that on the channel exactly why aren't the girls talking more? <laughs> those girls they don't talk enough <laughs> i need those bad jokes every, every minute, minute. <laughs> we clearly have only been together for right now for right now this is you're witnessing the reunion <laughs> and then we can't be stopped or helped <laughs> no i don't think we can both were bad <laughs> Um, so we are talking about the Garden Grays. At every festival, there is kind of a progressive dining <laughs> There's just a progressive dining situation, <laughs> if you want it. There's a, it is kind of a progressive dining situation. It is a little progressive dining. Where basically, you have to eat five of these selected, like, noted menu items. They're around the festival. At this festival, it's really exciting because they're all plant-based which is really cool because at most other festivals there's very limited plant-based offerings, not at this one. Um, and you just eat five of the things you can repeat. So if you just really love the grilled street corn on the cob, you can eat that five times and it counts. And if you do that, you get the completer prize, which Emma's eating because we did do it today all together we as a group. We did do it today. And also one thing before we move on from that, you can bring your passport back. So if you don't want to do it all in one day or if you know you're going to be here multiple times, bring back the same passport and it'll count. You also, if you lose, if you like leave your passport at your hotel and get more of the stamps, as long as you go get your passport, if you like got two stamps in one passport and three in another, you can redeem. You can, we took three passports collectively to redeem it. Yeah. So I really like this. This is the first time I've had this. Yeah, it's really tasty. It's really tasty. It's really bright, but super tart in a fun way. Still sweet, kind of makes your lips pucker a little bit, but I really like it sour. And it's a fun combo of flavors that you're not not gonna get anywhere else because it is that Dole Whip lime, but there's other stuff going on with it. And Dole Whip lime already is kind of a rare flavor. Yeah. So it kind of reminds me of a little bit of key lime, which I also just really like. And so, you get to keep this cup, which is plastic, but it is super cute. So hand wash only. Yeah. Trust me, it will melt. At home advice from Emma and Quincy. It's almost time for the Garden Rocks concert series, starting tonight with the first night of Flower and Garden Festival. Now where each of the beat will have some more of those pop and R&B acts uh, that we know and love from yesterday and today, Garden Rocks will tend to have more of a classic rock vibe with bands like Berlin and Richard Marx coming to play hits from the good old days. <laughs> Opening night, there was a band called The Vibe but I am excited to come and be here opening night with you. Because hashtag <laughs> live entertainment is important. It is important. Okay, one other thing to end our festival day. There are shows over here on Spaceship Earth. There are three different shows. They happen 10 minutes apart as soon as um, dusk, as soon as the sun sets. Um, the first show is the regular Epcot vibe show that I, you know, they, they play all the time. So that one's, none of these are new by any means, but the first show is the regular Epcot show. No words or anything, just music, but the Spaceship Earth lights up. It's really pretty. Then 10 minutes later, there is the Encanto show, which is the one specifically for Flower and Garden Festival. And then the third one is Colors of the Wind from Pocahontas, which is also really cool, really fun. That's a childhood movie of mine and I love it. So all three shows happen about 10 minutes apart as soon as the sun sets. <laughs> Guess what? I found all my friends! Hey! All right, everybody.
everybody? Rapid fire. Oh, no, the show's starting. Oh. Rapid, rapid fire. Favorite part of the festival. Okay. Cauliflower. Okay. The gumbo. Ramen. Uh, um, uh, gar uh, garden rocks. Impossible. Jamaican. Beef Betty. Cinnamon roll bite. Those all sound pretty great. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch our perfect day at Epcot. We'll, we'll see, see you there. Oh, Bye. Happy flowering. Go here.